Hi there, Purple Girl here. <laughs> if you caught my last video, you'll be interested to see how much cleaner and tidier it looks in here. Uh, if you caught that last video, then you know that uh, the big shelving system I had in here blew over when we had a big storm and a lot of wind come through. I actually think um, the rain from the night before had washed out some of the soil that was underneath the uh, the shelf there and uh, made the footing unstable. And when it fell over, I think it knocked these two shelves aren't actually part of the cold frames. So they're just sitting here freestanding. I think it knocked them over and uh, knocked a lot of trays of plants over. Um, the shelves that are attached to the cold frame that are part of it, they're very sturdy because even though the, the cold frame rocks and moves around a little bit in the wind, it uh, they stay sturdy and stable. So that was that was good. At least I didn't lose those. Um, I've had a chance today, the weather was a bit nicer, to go through things and really, really have a good look at things. And uh, it looks like I really didn't have too many um, casualties. So that was, that was a good thing. Um, what I did learn from that though is I need to, hey Buster, hey Buster, hi Buster. I need to um, get things cleaned up out of here and uh, get this ticked up. I actually have a bunch of potted peppers that I want to get in here that um, I don't have a lot of room for. I could probably slide some in the back now, um, but I do need to get things cleaned up and in the ground and into pots where they, they need to go and not just sitting in all these little trays and cells. So I took some time today to get through um, quite a few things. Uh, it's the weekend and so there's a lot of people out with, you know, kids and grandkids and things in the backyards and that so I didn't have the camera out with me for for a lot of the planting but um, it's quieted down out here now and I thought I'd take you along show you some of the things I've done some of the things uh, that I am hoping to get done either tonight maybe in this video or um, this weekend for sure it looks like it might start raining again I can't believe it June is always our big rainy month and then dry 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 after that um, so let's go and we'll have a look at what I what I did get done today and uh, where I put some of these plants and then hopefully I can get some planting done as well the first thing that I did for planting was actually in my garden uh, if you followed along with my channel you'll know that I've planted a lot of um, zinnia seeds last month I think it was and then we had a very 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 cold spell and then a super hot spell and a lot of them hadn't really come up or done anything so I have one way way back there I don't even know if you can really see it on there that's coming up from that planting in this bed of garlic but the rest hadn't come up and this bed of garlic actually um, the whole kind of this most of this end here hadn't come up with garlic. I don't know if the leaf mulch was just too heavy here or what the problem was, but I didn't have a lot come up here. I still will have lots and lots of garlic. But I decided to fill it in with uh, some, some zinnia plants that already had started. So these are Benary's giant zinnia plants and I put uh, seven, I believe, in here all together. So that's gonna be really nice ones even be ready to bloom there soon next few days and this one as well looks like I'll have a pink one a yellow one and who knows what else then I came over here and I had a couple of queenie lime reds so I stuck those there's one right there this is a potato bed and again I planted a few zinnias in here but they just don't seem like they're coming up and there's another one there again looks like it's about to pop a bloom out pretty soon for me. Now I didn't plant these today but I have had some come up that I planted by seed um, after all that cold that we had and so I did thin those out and move some some around a little bit but those are zinnias as well. Um, can't remember the variety offhand. I had a few more zinnias so I brought them over here to my pollinator garden. I think the butterflies will love them. So I popped three in. 
you can see here. And this is Zahara Raspberry, um, what's it called? Raspberry Lemonade. So I have one here. There's one in the back there. And there's one right here. And it's actually split into two. Are you Buster? It's actually split into two um, main stems. So that'll be interesting to see how many I get out of there. And then I still had more zinnias. So I popped, I'm trying to remember where I put them. I have one right here, back by the foxgloves. If you saw me plant the foxgloves over along my east fence, I have one there. And then the other one is right here. So I just had the two left to put in this area, the one, like I said, over by the foxgloves. And then um, I had this one. These are Mardi Gras, so they're gonna be quite large, nice big blooms on them. Buster, okay. You're in the shot. <laughs> You're in the shot. Oh, she go. Go, 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 go. Um, and I put this here, and it might seem like kind of an odd place in it, but I have a peony back here. And I think when I was moving some mulch around this early, early this spring, I think I inadvertently knocked off some of the shoots. So it just has one, one little shoot coming off of it, and it's looking kind of sad and made this area look a lot more empty than um, I'm used to. So I have a couple of Cosmos in the back, but I thought this Zinnia here might kind of fill this in. There is a foxglove. Um, there's a couple of Gladioli coming up. And I have um, uh, some irises and thyme and a pansy, but this main area here I think is gonna be a little lacking. And so I thought this nice large Zinnia that's already has side shoots coming off, I think it'll be a nice addition to this spot here. Once it fills out, it won't look quite so awkward. <laughs> And then I have a couple of pots that I potted up and they're both exactly the same. I actually already had them started with some bunny tails grass in them and some arimurus. How do you sell it? Amarurus? I don't know. I'll put it on the screen for you. Um, it's a, a new, um, like a, a root that you, you buy, you plant the root and then it's supposed to put up these big spikes of yellow. And um, it was the first year trying it, I bought the spring, put it in. And I really wasn't thinking it was going to grow. So I've been trying to decide what to do with these pots. And uh, so once I'd kind of gotten things organized today, I thought I have a couple of caliber koa left over that would work to put in these pots. And then I have some, um, I think it's called Nemophila Penny Black. Just this tiny little thing. Again, another thing I started from seed this year that um, is new to me. But while I was digging around, popping these in, I did see there is shoots forming for that, um, that root. So I should actually get some, some big yellow um, spiky plants coming into these pots as well. So I have two of these, like I said, and they're both just, I have two matching um, ash trees like this one here behind me in my yard. So the one pot here and the other one is just over um, under the other ash tree. Um, it looks like they're in a lot of shade and right now, it is, but this will get full on morning sun. And um, actually some, some um, of the afternoon sun kind of sneaks through here until it gets right up, right down lower in the sky. So uh, I think these will do all right here. And it's a pot, so if, if they're not happy, I can move them. Here's the matching pot, and you can see it's gonna get um, a lot of afternoon sun. This one will actually get a little bit of, it'll get a little bit of shade um, kind of through the late morning to early afternoon and then it'll be back in the sun again. So it should definitely get lots of sun here. Then I put together this pot here. Um, this is actually a hanging basket. Uh, it's a nice square planter though. And I've just taken the, the hooks off of it. Um, so what I put in here is just a really big verbena. Actually, you may have seen it if you saw my last video, it fell off the shelf a few times during that video. And I think it's actually a mixture of a couple of different verbena. This one has like a stripey one, a very dark red, and this uh, blushy kind of apricot color. So I'm pretty sure, pretty sure there's a couple different verbenas that were in that pot. And then I have what, um, after cleaning up everything falling around, I'm pretty sure is fire frost petunias. There's three of those in there. There's one here, one here, and one back here. And then I'd bought some um, Manisha or candy corn vine, or some people call it firecracker vine. And so I have one here, one over here, and one back here. So they're just kind of cut into thirds on the pot and those 
six plants are spaced out. And then the verbena is right in the middle. So I think this will be nice. This will get mostly um, morning sun, I believe. And then again, now it's the evening and it's getting the evening sun as the sun comes back over the house. It should get shaded from some of the worst part of the, the heat of the day. Um, the verbena and the, the petunias like the sun, but the candy corn vine um, would prefer a little bit of shade. I think the other plants will provide some of that to it, and I think it'll be okay like that. Now, coming towards the back of my yard here, uh, this is past my big pots of peppers and this planter full of peas and carrots. I have three big pots here behind that uh, fir tree. Actually, two of them my neighbor gave to me, and then I had one, and uh, I painted them all black, and they're looking really nice. So I had all those toilet tubes of, uh, of sunflowers that I had started, and uh, you may see me picking those up off my greenhouse floor there. And so I thought those really, they need to get um, planted. They were getting all wonky in their growth, or some of them were drying out, some of them were too wet. They're just you know, uh, things are getting out of control in there. So what I wanted to do was plant some in pots here. Um, I have a few varieties that are taller and then I have some nice little ones like teddy bear and um, burnt that are nice, just little short um, sunflowers. And then I have some that are around four or five feet tall. And then flanking either side of these three pots, I have some of my larger sunflowers as well that I put in the ground. So out here, what did I plant here? Must be around 20, 25 sunflowers, I believe. And I have Autumn Beauty, um, Giant Sun Glow, I think it's called. Su Giant Sun Gold, um, Vincent's Fresh, Go Bananas Mix, um, Firecracker, Valentine, Pro Mix Red, and Velvet Queen. I think that covers them all. So I'm thinking I should get a really nice um, display of sunflowers going back here. Um, just once they settle in here, it'll take a little bit of time for them to settle in. While I was back in this area, I decided uh, I have some Jade Princess Millet and I'm still kind of deciding what to do with it. And I had a little bit of bunny tails grass left. I had had one idea in my head with what to do with that uh, Jade Princess Millet. And then I changed my mind. And so I've had to kind of come up with a new plan for it. And I think I've have the plan, so I think I'm gonna get these planted now and I'll, I'll bring you along for that. Okay, so if we back up a little bit just uh, from where the sunflowers are there, I have this tree and I actually moved this tree this spring. I had just moved it back to the back here to look good back here and it has room to grow out here. Um, and it's doing quite well. Luckily, it's had all this nice rain and it's had some warm weather and it should do well. But underneath it, I'm going to put some of that Jade Princess Millet and a Bunny Tails grass. And I think those will grow up really nice around it. So the Jade Princess Millet um, is my first time growing it. I grew it from seed. And uh, from what I understand, and I actually saw someone was in the garden, some when I was in the garden center the other day, and uh, it seems like my understanding is correct, is it's going to keep this kind of bright chartreuse almost green foliage. And then it's gonna shoot up um, this like seed stalk, which is essentially the flower, the plant, like a grain, a millet. And it's going to be this vibrant burgundy red color. So quite striking looking. Uh, if I recall offhand, it gets 18 to 24 inches tall and wide. So I have three here that I'm going to place around the tree and then the sunflowers on the ground are kind of back here. There's a daylily there. There's a dwarf Colorado blue spi cypress, not cypress, a spruce there. And then I have this bunny tails grass, which I believe gets about 18 inches by 18 inches. So I'm going to put that in front with the Jade Princess around the back and they'll just be kind of a ring around this tree. I think it's going to look really nice. And then we'll have that that color of the the foliage and the spikes here and then the backdrop of the sunflowers i think that's going to be incredible so this ground back here is pretty wet from all the rain we've had so take these 
Now, again, it looks really shaded back here, but this area does get a lot of sun throughout most of the day. And then it just gets um, more shade towards late afternoon, evening. So should be perfect for these plants. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't a lot of clay right here. Maybe the rest will be just as good. Oh, there's a lot of ants back here. This plant is covered in them. Hmm. So we'll do this one back here. So I thought this is a fun way to see those roots there. This is a fun way to kind of fill in this area while the trees are still growing and I'm deciding exactly what I want to do with it. There must be an ant's nest around here. This just covered in ants. Okay, so. I'm surprised actually this isn't as bad a clay right in this exact area here. Maybe for me planting these trees in the last few years, there's been enough amendments and things, and I do usually mulch with grass clippings and uh, wood chips back here, so maybe it's getting better. Back right at the sunflowers was still really, really clay back by the fence there. Oh, bunny tails. Bunny tails is looking a little scraggly. Um, but I think once it gets out of here, very root bound. Um, they're really ready to move on. I could probably split this and make several plants with it if I wanted, but I don't think I'm needing any anywhere else. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. I think that's going to be really nice. There'll be some nice movement and flow back here. Like I said, the colors I think will be amazing. You know, contrast against the blue spruce. And then with the uh, the flowers and the blooms from the sunflower, I think it's going to look really good back here. This is an area I usually don't pay a lot of attention to, but it's kind of starting, it's, it's starting to be one of those spots where I'm, I'm trying to put a little bit more effort into in the last couple of years here. So slowly it's starting to come together and look like more than just the no man's land that it's been. That's going to look nice when the, they spool out a bit more and the wind's moving them around. Now I do have one more Jade Princess. Well, I actually have two more, but I set one over here. I don't know if you can see that pot there. I have this one right here and it's not looking the healthiest. I'm kind of thinking about sticking it in here. I have the American Highbush Cranberry and then I have two different types of lilies that I just, they were in my way when I was doing planting one time and lilies kind of grow like weeds here. So I just popped them over um, here and they've taken off, they like this spot. So I kind of feel like sticking this, this millet right here and seeing what it does um, in this space here. Like I said, it's not, this one's not looking that great. So it might just die off, but uh, I think we'll, we'll put it in the ground. I think it'll do better in the ground than it is uh, sitting in this little pot. Uh, one thing I did read about this uh, Jade Princess millet is it's very, very sensitive to cold. So I made sure to keep it indoors until we we're getting warm days consistently and warm nights. I think right about there. We'll make this poor old frog planter here. I think right about there will be good though. It should fill in this area by the, the lilies. And I can't remember if these are red or yellow or what these are, but either way, I think they should look good with the colors of the millet. Most of my lilies are red or yellow, so I'm just assuming it's one of those. Um, normally I would want to put a little bit, I really want to just put some, some fertilizer in the hole, especially with this poor, sad looking one, but I'm pretty sure I read that, uh, 
too much fertilizer with the millet is not a good thing. So I'm going to go with this for now and I'll look again. And if it does say that some fertilizer would be good, I can always come back and top dress with some. I'm not quite certain that's what I had read. seemed like it was growing just a little bit high in the pot. Um, the roots were kind of at the top, but I think it actually likes to be a little bit higher. Uh, I think I've heard it'll kind of push itself up out of the ground a bit if it, if it gets planted too low. So I'm going to have to go look at the others and just make sure they're not buried too deeply. I think this one's just got the roots basically covered now. I'm going to have just a double check on the others. Um, but I think that'll be good. I have one more of these plants. This is how much rain we've had. Normally this area is dry sand the dog kicks around and plays in. It's the kid's old sandbox that I've taken over. I uh, stepped back here to put that uh, Jade Princess millet in back there. See it there? I was thinking about planting it there. And then when I went to step out, I stepped right there. And I don't know if you can tell, but that is mm, close to 10 centimeters deep there that I sunk in in my shoe. And I wasn't sure I was going to get back out of it. So I think we're just going to leave that guy back there for now. And uh, we'll see. Hopefully, I don't forget it's back there. But I'm not walking back there right now again. Okay, so I'm feeling a lot better than I was, you know, just yesterday, was it? The day before? The day before, when I uh, came in here and everything I thought was destroyed. And uh, like I said, had a chance to go through and most things I think will be all right. And I've been able to go back and, and reorganize and, and, you know, get a good plan for all these plants. Um, you know, the plan I start out with in my head in, uh, in midwinter when I'm planting these things isn't always the the plan that winds up happening in the end it was starting to get a little bit overwhelming in here but that's part of the fun for me and uh, I think I've got it all back under control I think I've got things sorted out like I had said in that last video the, the way the petunias um, I had them in flats with just one or two plants labeled in the in the flat and the rest were all the same thing in each flat and the flats kind of fell jumbled up together so I'm not sure I'm not sure if I have them sorted out right but hopefully I do and uh, hopefully I have things back organized and and figured out again so thanks for coming along with me to do a little bit of planting and see where I am with my plants here and we'll see you in the next one bye